This is how we find and exploit out of date plugins in WordPress to pull off attacks and gain remote code execution. And it's pretty easy to do because all we need are some open source tools and some Google foo. In fact, we probably don't even need Google. First, we'll set up our environment and you can skip this part if you want and jump straight into the hacking section. But really the best way to get good at breaking stuff is to deploy it yourself drink some coffee and enjoy a day of falling face first into rabbit holes. Yeah, it's the only real way to learn. After that, I'll show you how to enumerate a WordPress target and its plugins. Spoiler alert, it's pretty easy to do. Then try some exploits to see whether we can gain remote code execution. Now, a lot of WordPress exploits require authentication. So if you didn't already, check out the first video here on some ways to attack users. And of course, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's dive in. Let's start with some tough love. To become good at pen testing, AppSec, bug bounty, whatever it is, you need to spend some time setting things up, learning how they work, and then breaking them. Copying and pasting the most recent WAF bypass or bug bounty payload from Twitter into every input field you can find is not going to do you any favors in the long run. So first up, let's build a local WordPress instance. If you don't have it installed already on your Kali machine, you can sudo apt install docker.io and docker compose. Then we'll make a doc file that looks like this. It has two services running, WordPress and MySQL. Oh, and just a heads up, don't use things like this with hard-coded credentials in production environments. It's okay on our local VM, but it's far from security best practice. We're mapping both of the services over their standard ports, so 80 for WordPress and 33064 MySQL. Now let's go ahead and run this and get our WordPress instance configured. All right, so I have my Docker Compose file here, and I'm just going to sudo docker compose up, and this will take a minute to spin up. If you don't have the images locally, it will need to download them. And once it's done, we can access the service. So I'm just going to come to Firefox and then come to localhost, switch off my proxy. And here we get the install file and English United States. Yeah, maybe let's go with English UK. Not sure what the difference is apart from the Zs. And let's create a site title. So please like and subscribe. And we'll just do Alex and we're just going to set a weak password. We're not going to be cracking this or, or anything today. Hey, it's a.com and then install WordPress. All right, let's just log in and we do Alex, Alex you can do remember me and we get welcome to WordPress 6.2.2. So we need to install some plugins. So I'm going to come over to plugins and I'm just going to add a couple. So let's add classic editor and activate. And let's also add BB press activate this as well. This is just so we have something to enumerate and things to look at. And we're also going to upload our vulnerable plugin too. So I'm just going to come to upload plugin, browse, come to home. And the one that I've prepared is called wpupg.zip. Open this up, click install. And the upload exceeds the max upload file size directive in php.ini. So we're probably just going to have to quickly create a php.ini file and rebuild the container. And once again, when you run into issues like this, being able to troubleshoot and fix them is really going to help you understand under the hood and improve your security skills. So let's just come back to here and let's just open up this and come into labs and WordPress. And I'm just going to vim php.ini and I'm just going to add upload max. And then we need to update our Docker file a little bit. So I'm just going to hit control C so this stops gracefully. And then I'm just going to vim our Docker file. And in here, I'm just going to add a new volume. So this is going to be php.ini. And then we're just going to user 
local etc php conf.d and then uploads.ini, I think. Save this and then sudo docker compose up. We might need the build tag, not sure, but we'll add it anyway. Come back to here, upload plugin again. Don't need to browse because it's already there. Install and the plugin has installed successfully. Now, I didn't know how to fix this off the top of my head. I had to go and Google this, but everything is either on Stack Overflow or if you prefer, you can ask ChatGPT what's going on and more often than not, it will give you a pretty good answer. So let's activate this plugin and we're all good. So that's it for the setup. And I can't stress how important it is to do things like this if you're looking to expand your technical skill set. Really, you can use this setup at any time to test your payloads against a local target, troubleshoot an exploit if it's not working, or even attack plugins of your choice to hunt for CVEs. All right, first up, when we land on a site, we can check our plugin called Wappalizer. And there are alternatives to this. So you can use WhatWeb, for example, or you can use Web Analyzer, which is a command line tool, if you want to integrate that with some automation or some other tools. So we've got WordPress 6.2.2. So this is, I think, probably the latest version or, or pretty close to it. And we can see standard MySQL, we can see the front end, so React, for example, Apache server, the WordPress theme, so 2023. And this generally just gives us an idea of what's happening. So I think the main things to pull away from here are WordPress. And whenever we see this, we think, okay, we need to think about how do we attack WordPress? What are the common ways? And since it's a latest version, it's unlikely that there's going to be something like remote code execution against the latest version, but we can go ahead and enumerate that and check with WP scan, which we'll do in a couple of minutes. But to begin with, I want to look at the plugins. Now in either older versions or misconfigured versions, we could do something like WP dash content and just come to plugins, for example. But unfortunately, this doesn't give us a nice listing of the plugins that are installed. And what I encourage you to do is when you're running this as a local lab, you can just come into your terminal and sudo docker psa. Here we can see our WordPress instance running and sudo docker exec dash it the container id and then bash and then again, you can kind of compare what you're seeing on the front end to what you're seeing running inside the container. And this is going to give you a much deeper understanding of what's happening under the hood. And it's really great for learning and research purposes as well. So if I come into uh, WP content like this, we can see that there are actually all of these directories, so languages, plugins, themes, etc. And if we come into plugins, we can see that there are a few here. And actually a lot of WordPress plugins come with the WP dash prefix. So that's something to think about when we're brute forcing as well. And since we don't have directory listing turned on, we're gonna use fuff to try and discover what's in this directory. And then once again, we can maybe compare the results to what we know exist. So if we come into labs, WordPress, clear, FFUF dash U, and we want to fuzz this here and we want to choose a word list. So once again, choosing a word list is really, really important when you're fuzzing. And so I don't actually know what good word lists there are for WordPress. So all I'm going to do to begin with is come here and grep dash R WP dash to find word lists that have this prefix in them and then use a yeah, sec lists and then hit enter. And this gives us quite a lot of results straight off the bat. So I'm just gonna control C out of this. And obviously you can see that some of these are password lists, but if we come back up, here we have WP content CMS WP plugins .fuzz.txt. So I think what we can do is we can take a list out of this directory. So if I come here, user share, Sec lists, discovery, web content, CMS. This is a, this would have taken me ages to find manually. And we have wp plugins.fuzz.txt. 
So I'll just close this and then hit enter here and let this run for a minute and see what it finds. All right, so it only found the post image plugin and it didn't actually find anything else in there. So we might want to think about using a different word list. And also in this case, it gives us a good understanding of the limitations of the one that we've just used since once again, since we have access to the Docker container. Next up, I think what we want to do is use WP scan. So WP scan, we can just do WP scan like this, dash dash URL, HTTP colon slash slash, localhost and let's run it first without the API token and then I'll run it with the API token so that you can see the difference. Now that was pretty fast, much faster than our fuzzing. So once again, this might be a better approach when you're targeting specific things like WordPress. Although sometimes there might be some custom content that you need to fuzz for manually using things like FFUF, for example. And if I come up, we can see the WordPress version is 6.2.2. We can see the theme in use, and we can see that we have BBPress installed, and we have WP UPG installed as well. So we can go ahead and take a look at the versions of these, maybe do our own research on available exploits, or what we can do is we can pass an API key and look for known issues. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna run the same scan again, dash dash API token, and I'm gonna copy and paste in my token, which you can get this for free. If you sign up to WP scan, all you need is an email address, it doesn't cost you anything. And I think you get like 50 scans a day or something with your API token. So paste this in, run it once again. And as you can see popping up, we actually get known exploits. So here we have one vulnerability identified, user post gallery less than or equal to 2.19, we have unauthenticated remote code execution, which is great. This is exactly what we're looking for. And of course, it may also identify other issues, especially within WordPress core, though it looks like we're all patched and good at the moment. But typically, if we don't have a account, what we're looking for is unauthenticated exploits. But if we're able to attack users and things, then we might be looking for things like cross-site scripting to then try and get our initial foothold into the admin panel. So we can have a look at these references and I'm just going to take the first off the list. And of course we could use something like search exploit as well to take a look and see if we can find this exploits in there. But all I'm gonna do is open a new tab come to here and it looks like it comes with a proof of concept. And this is quite a nice short one as well. So we don't have to go through and read a really long exploit or troubleshoot a complex Python script as well. So we come down and let's give this a try. So let's update the target. So this is 127.0.0.1.7.7.7.7. We could have kept the 127.0.0.1 I suspect, but we'll just change it to localhost since we know that that works using our browser and hit enter and it looks like we did indeed get code execution. So here you can see exec, which is a function that will execute system commands, and we're passing in id and null null. So that's it for today's video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you have questions, join us on live stream every Tuesday. Catch you next time.